Today, we're coming to you with a strategy session on product research. We're bringing you some great information on the Amazon FBA information highway. So what we want to do, we've learned in our last video how to open up our Seller Central account and how to open up a business and then how to keep us separate, how to keep our personal assets separate from our business. And now once this is done, now it's on to product research. Now understand that finding a product is the most important part of your business. And so we're going to need a software. So we need a strategy session on mm, how am I going to look for a product? How am I going to find a product? How am I going to get a good software. The two top ones that I'm very familiar with are Jungle Scout and Helium 10. These are the two big ones. There are others that you can look at, but these are the top, top dogs in the field. So personally, I like Helium 10. It allows me to do a lot more and um, I find more movability and more data here. And they're constantly updating and giving us more stuff. Also, I may want to branch out to uh, Walmart and I have Diamond, so I'm kind of like an overachiever. So I want to know everything that's going on. And But we do recommend Platinum should you decide to get that one. We're not here to sell you anything. I'm just letting you know what's available out there and what I use and why I use it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And we're going to go take a look at um, Helium 10. So this is the tool section. And when we press tool, all of it pops up. So the best ways to look for your products is black box is one and magnet is another. These are great tools. And as you can see, there's some Walmart in here and they're doing a beta testing. And look at this. They have PPC Academy. This is to learn how to advertise your product, how to get it to page one. This is some great news. I like this. This is new e-ticket. So this is how you're able to see this one. Business valuation. And this is when you want to exit strategy. And so we have keyword tracker and it tracks your profits. It, Helium 10 tells you how much your business is worth. As you go along every so often, maybe every two weeks or every month, it's going to recalculate how much your business is worth. That's pretty exciting. And a lot, some people, they will scale their business to a really good height and then they will sell it and then they will start over and do it again. So this is a strategy. So this is strategy session and we use Helium 10 or I use Helium 10. So what I can show you is we have a magnet and this is what's called black box. So in black box, we're a lot, we can do a whole bunch of criteria that we want to put in, but it will only show us one person selling a product. It will sell, show us who's succeeding in this, how much they're making, what their price is. So when I click on their listing, they're the only ones that are going to show up. So what I do is I'll grab their top keyword, I'll pop it into Amazon and I'll pull up the main page. And then I'm going to do what's called an x-ray. I'm going to look at all these top sellers on this main page and I'm going to look at their data. So we're going to show you how to do this. My favorite is going to be magnet. I'm going to save that for last. But right now we're going to go into black box and we're going to drop in a bunch of criteria and I'm going to explain this to you and why we do this. Now, first, we're going to pick a category. Now, there's reasons why we pick categories specifically. So appliances can be electric. And electric needs to have a clearance by Amazon. So you would need to get a certificate from your supplier. And you would need to submit that to Amazon to have approval in order to sell. Now, being a first-time seller, you know, being a first-time seller, you don't want to do too much, okay? You don't want to be able to be doing too much and getting certificates. And you just want to get used to selling A to Z, learning how to sell. But courses will show you how to do this should you be determined to do it. Appliance is another one. They want to make sure that the plug is uh, accurate for the United States. They don't want you going in, getting something. You're, you're a UK seller. You're going to go get your product. And then you're going to drop it in um, the United States because you're in that marketplace selling in the Uni United States. And when it arrives, your, your customers are getting plugs that don't work because they're set for the UK. So basically, these certificates are saying, yes, we have the US plug. And yes, it is viable here for the product that we're going to be selling. And then they will say, okay, great, let's do this. But also understand with electronics, things can fail. 
It's an electronic. You ever bought something and it doesn't work? You go back and get the correct one and it works. Well, this can happen with your business. So you tend to get a little bit more returns on this. You have to be very careful with returns because returns can red flag your account. If you have too many returns, Amazon will pop in with a big red notice. Hey, you need to look at your listing. So you go in and change a photograph around and, and let them know. You're always respond to these office actions here. Always respond to, to Amazon, just say, yes, we understand. I have changed out some photos. I've made my description better. I've explained what they feel may be missing and I've removed something. So you are letting them know that you are doing your due diligence and then they will take the red mark away and you will go. And what you need to do to offset those is sell more product. So if you have bad reviews or you have a lot of returns, you're going to need to sell more in order to offset that. OK, so be very careful with electronics. Make sure it's a good product. Arts and craft and sewing, automotive. These can be electronics as well, but the automotive category is actually pretty good. Baby products. Now, baby products, you got to be very careful. You need certificates for these because anything like bowls and uh, diapers and clothing and anything like toys that can have parts, these all need certificates because it can create an allergic reaction. It needs to be BPH free. There are certain requirements that Amazon needs in order for you to sell a baby product. Now I'm determined to sell, uh, a, I, I wanna sell a cradle. This is what I wanna sell. But it turns out that there's like 300,000 people selling this, but I know I can sell it better. Listen, that's a lot of competition. And when your product gets there, you are 300,001. And now you have to rank through all of them. Let's look for a better keyword, but it's not about what you want to sell. It's about what the public wants to buy. Okay. Now there may be a lot of people searching for it, but maybe not a lot of people buying it. Okay. And we are going to analyze the data because we're going to be able to see it in order for us to find a product. Okay. Now beauty and personal care is another one you're gonna need certificates from your suppliers. So when you're talking to your suppliers, the very first thing we wanna do when we find a product that we wanna sell and say it's in the beauty category, maybe it's a facial mask. You know, they have, uh, I I've actually analyzed it and it it's an electronic machine that's a steamer and you put on this mask and it helps infuse it into your skin faster and it makes it softer. So it's actually turned out to be a, a good product, but I didn't sell it because I just saw too many complications with electronic and it could cause an allergic reaction on somebody's face. What if they're allergic to strawberries, you know, and they just don't know it and they get it and now they're like bright as a strawberry and end up in the emergency room. It's gonna be a big complaint. I'm gonna be mortified that I hurt somebody. So I don't wanna take that chance. But, you know, they have aloe vera and they have different ones, but still you can get an allergic reaction. Anybody can. Um, one in a million people, you may end up with that one person who buys. So I just don't like to be risky like that. I don't like to take the chances, but I would go, you're always going to submit your product to Amazon first. Submit it to Amazon. I'm looking at selling a product. This is the product I'm looking at selling it just like this. And do I need any certificates or are there any restrictions? They will send you an email back. Yes, these are the certificates you need. Great. Now I know this. Now I'm going to go into negotiations. And the first thing I'm going to do is say, I really like your product. And um, I like to work with you and see what you got. And what I'm looking for is because you want to get three different prices from them. You want DDP prices. Always, always, always remember this DDP. There are a lot of anagrams that are out there like EXW, FOB. These are not the ones you want. The EXW is just how much it costs to make the product, not to ship it. DDP includes everything from the warehouse of the supplier to the warehouse of Amazon and everything and customs and all that stuff in between is all taken care of. That's the one you want. So you want three prices, one for maybe 200 items, one for maybe 500 items, and then one for a thousand. And even though you cannot afford the a thousand, we want the prices in front of us. If they can make it for a thousand for uh, like say the product, because they'll do a bait and switch, they say, for two, you can get this product for $2.99. When you open it up, you got to get 1000 to get the $2.99. Otherwise, it's $7. Okay, 
So that's how that works. But if you can make a thousand for two ninety eight, you darn sure can make five hundred for that amount. So that's the price I'm going after, and I'm going to dig my heels in, and I'm going to go after it. I'm going to get as close to that as possible. I'll even ask them, hey, you got some, you have a lot of people that are buying and and that you're manufacturing for. Well, yeah, we actually have two in production. Good. Now they know I have. It's the way I do it. And now I know they have somebody in production. I said, why don't you just piggyback mine off of theirs? And this way you can make it for the same amount. And then on the next one, I'll up my I'll up my amount that I order so I can be up there. And this is something they may consider. OK, so what I want to do is I want to show you more categories. Books is a different category. Camera and photo again. Um cell phone, jewelry, coin collection. What we're looking for is, and we don't want to do the handmade product. Okay, health and household. Health we need to be concerned with, but I'm going to go with kit, home and kitchen. That's a good one. Kitchen and dining. Industrial and scientific is a good one. I'm going to go for office product. Patio and lawn and garden. Now, this is what I'm going to go with. These are my general ones. Toys and games can need certificates. Tools and home improvement is a good one. Sports and outdoors is a good one, okay? But for right now, I'm gonna pick these four categories. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start looking at all these boxes. What do I want to convey, okay? What I want is variation count. I'm brand new, so I don't wanna compete with a bunch of people who have like 10 different variations. I'll just go with two. So I can have maybe a gray one and a blue one. OK, these are the people I just want the maximum competitors I'm looking for have two variations. That's good enough for me. OK, now uh, review rating. Um, my maximum review I'm looking for is 250 reviews because I want the reviews to be low on this page. I want as many under 250 as possible. You can even do 200 or 300, you know because this is gonna allow a new seller to get in because there's still low reviews. I don't want a page that has a bunch of people with like 20,000 reviews, 50,000 reviews, 10,000 reviews, because here I come along with one review and how's that gonna look? They're gonna buy from these other guys because they look like they have credibility against me with my one. Okay, so we wanna look at a page that has a bunch of low reviews where I can make my product photos better than theirs and they're gonna end up picking mine. Whether they give me a review or not, I'm still making the sales and the sales will show up. Well, this person's making a lot of sales. They may only have one review, but they're making a lot of sales. So these guys look pretty good. Let me go take a look at them. And there they're going to see their photographs, which they get from their supplier or pretty generic versus mine. And I'm going to go all out on my photos because the on your listing, the most important part of your listing is your photographs, okay? So of your business, it's your product. Of your listing, it's your photographs. Fulfillment, this one I want. Fulfilled by Amazon. I do not want, I, I, I fulfilled by Amazon, but I do not want to see Amazon as a competitor up there. Mm -mm. I just want to see Amazon FBA sellers, okay? That's a critical one here in on this platform. So when we're using Black Box, definitely always click that. You want to have FBA sellers only. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, prices. Okay, so Amazon has recently jumped up their FBA fees and they're going along with, the, it's because of the war over there, it's because of the economy, whatever. Whatever floats your boat to make you think that this is why we're raising the prices. It was high enough already, but they ta raised it just a tad. So we used to generally look for products at 18 to 25, but now we're gonna go a little bit higher because we the higher your product, cost on Amazon, the bigger the gap will be, you know, for you allowing you to make profits because your negotiations with your supplier are what are going to create the gap. Okay. So I'm going to go $29.99 and let's go with, I'm going to go $39.99. Okay. So this is the general price of what I want to see. $21.99 to $39.99. I would generally do 25, but that's fine. Price change percentage. No monthly revenues. Okay. My minimum, I never do maximum because I leave that open. I want the maximum. I want to see who's making the most. But my minimum, what am I looking for? For a new seller, you could say, well, I want to make 3000 a month. Okay, well, that's fine. 5000 is better. I'm going to go with, I want to see who's the minimum person there. I want to see $10,000 a month. Okay, this is what I want to see. I generally go, actually, I generally go with 8000 Okay, that's 80000 8000 uh, 
uh, dollars in monthly revenue. Sales change, no. Monthly sales, monthly just best, no. Okay, so now there's another one, weight. So the, the maximum weight I want is three pounds. And the reason for this is when you start to go over three pounds, Amazon's FBA fees scale up a little bit. You get charged a little bit more and you want to save every penny. So we want to go with three pounds. This is light. This is a nice light category. You can even do 2.5 and see what pops up. So if you keep on putting the exact same criteria in, you're going to get the same results. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a devil. Well, I can't find anything. The same thing's always popping up. We'll change some of these. Change the price. Change the weight. You know, change the category. Change the monthly revenue. Change these things. But basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for some products, but I'm going to keep it in a criteria. And I'm going to show you that a little bit later on. So this is what I want to see. So I'm going to pull a search. So right now I have one of 50 of 500 products. That's not bad. I can go through these pages, but we're going to see a lot of kitchen, uh, Christmas stuff that's popping up. 300 piece metal engraving blank multi-purpose aluminum. Hmm, interesting. And he's selling it for $25 and he's making $12,000 a month. Monthly sales, he does. So now you need to pay attention to this, this monthly sales. If I can compete with him, I'm going to have to make sure that I have this many uh, product that I send. So I would get like an order for 500. But since I'm new, I'm not going to be where he is. But I need to be ready for when I start selling and I want to compete with him. But I also need to see... Can I compete with him or are there too many competitors? And, and we're going to be able to see this because we are going to flip over to Magnet. So right now we're in black box, but we're also going to use Cerebro and Magnet. And this is how we're going to find different keywords and find out our competition. So right now, one seller, last year's sales. So he's a new seller. That's what that's telling me. Okay. So I want to make sure that um, what's going on in here is the information I want. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take a look at this seller. Office product index. Hmm. This is interesting. So I'm going to click on him. Okay. I want to see what's going on. This is what's going on. He's got a differentiation here. So this is, actually looks very nice. Okay. Aluminum metal. So 300 piece metal engraving blank, multi-purpose aluminum uh, sheet. Okay, business card blanks for CNC engraver, lazy engraver, do-it-yourself cards. And this is the thickness. So he's doing rather well. Everything looks good. This is all the cards that he has going on. It looks nice. And the card itself that they have designed actually looks nice. So now what I want to do, metal engraving blank, multi-purpose aluminum sheets. Hmm. I would probably pick metal engraving blanks and see what pops up. I think it's going to be that one. That looks like it's his keyword. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. And now I'm going to put this into Amazon. So I'm going to take the main page and I'm going to see who all the sellers are that are using this keyword. Okay, see, consistency. This is what we want to see, consistency. And the next thing we want to see is consistency in prices. So this is different, so I would end up removing them because it's not the same. This is the same, this is the same, this is the same. This is lower because it's a lower amount, okay? So I want to make sure, yes, we're going to see consistency. This is pretty good. All right, so now that I have helium-10, I'm going to do what's called an x-ray. And it's like a doctor does an x-ray, looks inside your skin and looks at the bones. Well, we're going to look at the bones of this. We're going to go inside and take a look. And this little mark up here is our helium 10. So I'm going to click on it. And what I want to see is an x-ray. I can do a keyword x-ray. Beta, It's in beta test right now. It's pretty, pretty good. But I'm going to do an Amazon x-ray of the on the product research. We're going to go take a look. All right. So here we are. And the basic ones we're looking at is the top 10. So I'm going to open this up just a tad more and I'm going to see what's going on. I want to remove these sponsored people because they're paying to be there. I want to see who's there organically. Here's a red flag. It says nobody up there is selling more than um, it says. Yeah, because this one is sponsored. So by removing that, I will say hide sponsored and apply filter and all the sponsored will go away. Now, these are all the organic people up there, but it's also telling me I don't have anybody who's selling that well. Look at this, only 1,600. 
This is a red flag. 3,000, 7,000, 2,000. That's to me, this would not be worth it. And not only that, every single person who is selling throughout an entire month is only making $41,000 collectively. I would actually say, no, I don't want this. But here's the thing. We can check other keywords that may be more viable. So this is how this works. I want to look at the products that look apples to apples, not apples to oranges. Apples to oranges would be like, uh, somebody has a product that doesn't make sense and it's in here because they're using the keyword. So I'm going to click on the top 10. This is a hundred. This is five. I want to click on the people that are selling in the price range that I want. So something that's a little bit higher and I'll go through this entire list and I'll find 10 of them that are the highest. And I want to see what keywords they're using. I'll take that $19 one. Okay, I'll also take the 24, I'll take the 23, and I'll keep going down the list on this page, and I'll find all the people that I want. You generally want about 10 of them, and here's load more results, so I can get some more people and see what else is going on. And I can do it this way, but my favorite way to do this is by clicking the top revenue makers. Instead of doing all of this, I'm just going to go yes and then no. So here's what I'll do. I'll take the top revenue makers, okay? So just because these are the top 10 people on the page, on page one, I can go here and go one, two. Now I can see who's really making some money, but it's still pretty low, okay? These are the top revenue makers. And they're, now we're at 270000 a month, okay? So this is because that doesn't fit and that doesn't fit. And this does. So that one is at 19. This one is at 38. I still want to take that 19. I'll take the other 38. Okay, so we're going to go down this list and see if there's anything else going on here. There's another 28. It does look like the same. It's brass. Uh, name. Oh, these are name plates. So it's a little bit different. That's apples to oranges. All right. So I will still want to go down. There's a 24. This is name plates. Um, pieces of metal business cards. Okay, so that's a good one. And this is uh, a good one. Okay, so I have a 19 and a 24. Then I'm going to keep scrolling down. Anything else? Yes, okay. So I have enough right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this one right here. And it's called doing a reverse ASIN. So everybody has an ASIN. This is their ASIN. This is the identification of the product for Amazon. So I'm going to reverse it. And I want to see what keywords they're using. So I'm going to open this up. And what it's going to show me is all the ASINs that I clicked on are going to pop up. And it's going to show me all the keywords these guys are using. Okay. I would generally have 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's good. Okay. So it's going to show me all the keywords that they are using to advertise for this one product just waiting for it to load. And when it does, it's going to show me how many keywords. They're using 2,595 keywords. That's a lot of keywords. I'm not going through all of those because, but I have a criteria. Now, the main thing you want to do when you're here is find the criteria. My criteria is 5,000 to 20,000 search volume. And the reason why I do this is I'll have more room to enter into this market. If I do, if I leave it open, there could be 100,000 competition in there. I can't get through that when I'm just starting out, but this is a nice place to start where you can make a lot of money, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply filter, okay? So now I have 36 keywords, perfect. This is what I wanna see. So the first thing I wanna do, everything is in my, in, in my search volume. It's all within uh, 5,000 to 20,000. It's exactly where I want it. So the first thing I wanna do is look over here competing products. If I click on that first time, look at how many competing products for these little keywords. No. See, I want to click on it again. Now I'm right where I want to be. I look at only 200 people competing for Papyrus Christmas, Brothers Laser Printer. Okay. You don't want to do brand name. Manila folders. Okay. So we're looking for this, but we actually found another keyword. It can be profitable for us. There's eight let me see, there's 7,000 people looking for it this month. I only have 400 people competing. Wow, this actually looks pretty good. Who knew? Eight by five manila folders, legal pad. 
There's another one. 423 people are competing versus 300,000. And I have 11,000 people searching per month. Hmm. I may be able to go this route. This is great. So I'm going to keep on looking at these keywords because your keywords become the product. So you're looking for keywords. So basically, this is like the biggest hint I can give you. This is your keyboard. I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm looking for something. I'm going to use my keyboard to type in words to find what I'm looking for. So the key word is the treasure that I'm looking for. I'm not going in for a specific product. I'm looking for the keyword. When I find that keyword, the keyword then becomes the product. Just like we were looking under this one that had one seller. I looked at the keywords. I reverse ascend it to find the keyword. And now I'm finding all different kinds of keywords that can end up being a different product that can be lucrative and profitable for me. So a keyword becomes a product that you can sell. Now, I've told people I'll sell a puppy diaper and, you know, a dock strap if, if it'll make me money. You know, it doesn't matter as long as the data shows me that it is profitable. OK, so right now I'm going to go ahead and look at it right now. The number that I really like is the one that has 11,000. Mm -hmm. I have 11,000 people searching. I only have 423 people competing, but I'm going to open uh, this one. It may be that the other one is they have key tags. It's probably going to be cost low. Engraving machine will cost a lot more. Business cards, custom key tag with labels, pop up Christmas engraver, Glowforge. OK, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You heard the tone in my vo voice, a Glowforge. What the heck is that? Anybody know what that is? I have no clue. That's what I want to open up because I don't know what it is. Let's go find out what it is. A Glowforge. Hmm. Okay, it is a form of a laser printer. Wow, this is expensive. A Glowforge, a laser engraver ro rotary. These things can be expensive. It looks like this is what I'm looking for. Okay, and these things are really expensive. Okay, so this would be for a more seasoned person. And, but for the sake of looking, you know, this is just looking, but at least we know, we didn't know what it was. We could act, actually, if I have a lot of money, this could end up being a really good product for me. But these are big laser engravers and these are going to cost a lot of money. I thought this one would be a lot more money than this one, but it's not. But see, these are extremely, oh, you can print your own logo on anything. That is pretty cool. Now, as I'm looking, premium grade, two-sided, Glowforge ready, unfinished. Ah, look at that. But it's not telling me a price. I'm curious as to what they're charging for this one. I'm interested. Okay, $20. So that's a good one. So that's what we were looking for. And it looks like that could be uh, uh, Glowforge ready. Okay, so this is the Glowforge. And these are the unfinished blanks for the Glowforge. And Glowforge sounds like it is uh, a brand name. All right. So this is interesting. Okay, so now we see something interesting, but that's what we're talking about. We're always, and we're gonna close it out and keep going. So uh, sympathy cards, uh, sublimination printer, price tag, tag string, funny, box Christmas. A lot of Christmas stuff coming up, a plate, blank cards. Okay, so what I wanna go do is I wanna go check that uh, manila folder thing out. Did I open it? No, this is still the other one. So I'm gonna close that one out. And I'm going to go for the new one. And I, we saw legal pads. Let's go look at these legal pads. And let's just see what's going on. Everybody loves legal pads. Let me see how much they're charging. Okay, so 17, 12, 22, 28. To me, these are priced way too low, depending on how many you have. Uh, leather portfolio could be for, for men and women. That could be something. We could pop that into magnet. So as you're looking for one product, one product can take you to another product, okay? So basically, I'm gonna take this just for the sake of looking. I'm gonna do um, a leather portfolio, leather portfolio for men, uh, organized business organization planner, mm -hmm. interesting. It's taking Amazon quite a while, to-do list, legal pads. Yeah, you have to have quite a bit and it's going to weigh a lot. So you're going to have to be able to get this and ship it over for like three bucks. 
you know, in order to be able to be profitable because Amazon is going to take a lot of money. So you know that legal pads weigh money. I mean, weigh, weigh, have a weight to them. And that raises the FBA fee. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. And this is great information. I'm going to come back to that one. Okay, here we go. So now I have this and I'm going to look. Look, these prices are way better. I like these prices on this. Okay. So, and there's gonna be a reason why some of them are really expensive, okay? But you see this guy, it's a different type of genuine leather portfolio, vegan uh, leather. Okay, so people, when they're looking for leather, they're looking for leather. But there are some people who like the vegan, they like, you know, there's some great stuff that's out there, okay? There's recycled leather. And uh, we've learned this from our trip on India sourcing trip. They uh, recycle the leather and they turn it into like trash cans. It's really cool. So that's something that I'm looking at. I need to wait until this lights up. And when it does, we're gonna go ahead and look at the x-ray. We're gonna look at the bones of this. We're gonna dive in and take a look at this. And then I'm gonna show you certain things within the x-ray, okay? Come on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the x-ray, but the pricing on this looks a little bit better. And I know that I can get these organizers for an inexpensive uh, cost with on Alibaba. Because it's, it's basically an organizer and leather is not that expensive and neither is paper. This is pretty cool. You can have it with paper or without. You can just do the organizer or you can add a, you know, do a little differentiation and add that, you know, to your, but it will add weight to the product. We could raise your, raise your FBA fees. So you want to do specific things that do not raise it. So it's making a lot of good money. But I need at least four to five that are 250 and below. But I still see, see this is looking good to me. All right. So the first thing I want to do is filter out and hide the sponsored. And those are the ones that are going to take that away from me. But that's fine. What I'm going to be looking at is because I may, you know, if I can get to page one, as long as I'm, I can be in the top 20 instead of the top 10. People generally buy in that first one, but they do scroll down and something can catch their eye a little bit lower. And that's wh where you want to be. But I do see the sales are really good. We don't care. The better the sales, better it is for me. I see a lot of leather and there, it seems like a lot of people in the top are in brown. Okay. Mm, the dark brown. Okay. So these prices are a lot better. I like them, but we want to be very consistent. There's always going to be an anomaly. So you're going to have 60s, 30, 40, 50, 60, okay? And then you're going to get somebody who's outrageously up there. But he's doing 571 a month. Uh, or this is his review count. He's selling 185 a month. Mm, that's pretty good for $129. Hmm. So our top seller is somebody who's selling the lowest. So there's your anomaly. And generally, usually it's an Amazon, okay? So this guy's doing 841. This is an Amazon seller. This is Amazon. And if you see over here, Amazon, US, China, US, US, Amazon, US, Amazon, Amazon, US, US, Australia. That's too many Amazon in the top 10. I don't wanna see that. I will never compete against Amazon. If I've got one or two in here, that's fine with me. But if I've got three, four, and five, I will bounce out of that page so fast because you cannot beat Amazon. They have too many, it's their platform. You can't beat them. OK, but if you have one or two and all the other sellers are from around the world, that's fine by me. Now, the one thing you want to pay attention to is right here, brand. You want to make sure it's not brand dominant. It's not brand dominant. That means I have three people with the same uh, uh, brand name here. So I can have um, Ring Sun and then down here, Ring Sun and then down here, Ring Sun. That means too many people. Th that means that these guys are dominating this market. And you'll see it by the sales numbers because you'll have 20,000 here, 10,000 here, 30,000 here. They've already got, they're already making like 80 grand off of these, these three listings. Hmm, we don't wanna go for brand dominance because people will see it and they'll say, oh, okay, well, it looks like these guys are the ones to pick. It's just their logic. It doesn't mean they're better. It means they've dominated the market. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna dominate a market in your niche. The prices are good, but what I want to see is the, uh, the FBA fees. They're over here. In Helium 10, you can click on it, hold down, and move it over, okay? So I want to move over the FBA fees, and I want to have it right next. Okay, this is good. Your Amazon FBA fees should never be half of your selling price, okay? It can only be 25% of the, You want it 25%. 
So the way we work it out is we work by four metrics, 25, 25, 25, 25. So the cost of your product to buy it, have it made and shipped should be 25% of the price. Now, the price of advertisement should be 25% of the selling price. Okay. Now, the, the cost of, so you have four of them that are in there and your Amazon FBA fees should not be 20, more than 25%. And then your pure profit is 25%. So remember, that doesn't mean that I spend $10, I only get $10 back. No. What you're forgetting, there's the return on investment when somebody buys your product. So this is, say you're doing $40 is what you're charging for. So what you want to do is your Amazon FBA fees you will never see again and your advertisement you will never see again. But your pure profit and your return on investment is what you get back. And that's how you turn $10 into $20. Now multiply that by how many units you have in there. And that gives you a general idea of how much profit you will make. So when you go to restock, you do the same amount and then take half of that and add it or take the whole amount, reinvest it back in and double of the amount you're going to send in. And now keep on scaling upwards to keep your business growing, making more profit. And this is how it works. But we want to pay attention to the Amazon FBA fee. It looks really good. The Amazon FBA fees are great. Okay. People are selling really well, so I need to be able to compete. But I see some people that are 141, 180 something, 200, 200. Okay, so I can start off with 500 of this one. I can start off with 300. And when I start to sell and I'm doing well, I'm going to send off. This is why when we budget, when you do a budget, you budget enough for to make the product, to ship the product, and to get a restock. That's how we do our budget. So when we start to sell over here and we're doing well after a couple of weeks, we already contact the supplier to start shipping, to start making our next batch. You can do the same amount, 500, okay? Because by the time it reaches over here, you'll still have some left and you'll add to it. Now the money that Amazon is going to be sending you back, okay, for your profits is going to start coming in. And you're going to start to bank that money and you're just going to start to set, save it up for the restock again. So now as you're selling here, selling here, now more money every two weeks is coming in and you're going to keep on saving that, okay? And now when it's time to restock, you say, okay, I'm down to X amount. We never want to run out of stock because our BSR can go down, but we, so we don't want to. And we, even if we are running out of stock, you don't slow it down, raise the price or do any of that, okay? You just go for it. Go for it and sell out strong. Get that BSR high, okay? And there's a strategy that we will show you later in another video of once you run out of stock and you have a shipment on the way, what you do is there in your seller central, there's a way to put your price up astronomically. Like if I'm selling it for $39.99, I'm going to put, I'm going to change my price to $150. Amazon will see this and say, nobody else is selling that and they'll suppress your listing. Now, once it's suppressed, that's fine. Let it be suppressed temporarily because your BSR will pretty much remain the same, okay? And then you wait for that shipment. And as it's getting closer, getting closer, and as it lands, now you're gonna change your price back to say, it was a typographical error. You notify Amazon, oops, sorry. And you're gonna bring it back down and your listing is gonna go back up and your stock's gonna go back in. And now your BSR is still really good. The lower your BSR, the better. So this is how we look and analyze a product. We want to make sure we have room. We don't want a lot of people that are in the thousands, and I mean high thousands, but I have somebody here that's at 161. I have somebody here who's at 16. I have 246. That's three of them. Now, if I go to my second tier, I have 33, 159, 120. That's six people that are up there, in there, where I can move in. I haven't even reached the and the, I can I can get in here. I can definitely get in here. And what I want to do is I want to look at the revenues. Oh, these are really good. There's there, everybody on, in the, on the top of the page is making really good money. And even lower, they're all making good money. Okay. Now I see somebody who's at 300 leather. Okay, 59, 15 is their FBA fee. I want to know why they're ma only making that. Maybe they're new. Okay. Maybe there's complaints. I don't know. Um, let me see. Okay. So he's selling 120 a month. So it looks like he may be a new seller. Okay. Mm, he may be out of stock. Anything that's NA is generally out of stock. Okay, and that's, I believe that's, no, it's not. Uh, okay, all right. 
So we're doing pretty good over here. We have somebody that's, uh, these are BSR rankings, okay? So when we're looking at our total sales, we wanna see how much they're doing, how much they're making revenues. So it is an Amazon seller. So they could be either changing out or they could be out of stock on this one. And it's not, not likely, but Amazon is removing a lot of their products and they're making room for other sellers, okay? So they've gotten so many complaints that they're all, all over Amazon and how am I supposed to beat you and blah, blah, blah. Lots of people were complaining. So Amazon is selling off part of their brand and they're making room for all of us because they make money off of us. So why not? And then they don't have to waste money on doing different things themselves in order to do this. So they're, we are the sellers. And so they're going to still sell some things and you're going to see things like this. Okay, I've got one, I've got two. But basically on the page, I have one instead of five. And that's fair. And we like that. So this is how we analyze a product. And the next thing we want to do is we want to click on this x-ray. Okay. And we want to see how is it doing? See, to me, this is bad. We never want to see a search volume of 649. That's horrible. I don't even want to see that. So I would close this out and I would basically go with the keyword that was up there. So when we change and use the keywords that are there, we want to put them into a reverse ASIN so we can find a search volume. So by me just taking whatever their keyword is, popping it in, the search volume wasn't that great on that keyword. So I would definitely close out on that one. But I would reverse ASIN the top ones that are in the price range that I want to be on. And I will come back here and do another keyword research. And I will find a product that fits. So you have manila folders. We haven't checked on this one. They do weigh a little bit. So that can be an issue, but here we go. Okay, 19, 27, 24, 27, this is consistent. I really like that. Okay, we'll have a few low ones, but this is, it's, it's generally because of the amount that they're selling. So you wanna go through all of them and analyze and see who's making the best sales. If it's the person who's selling 30, if it's the person that's selling 50, that's kind of where we wanna go. That's where we wanna land. But the more you get, these little pieces of paper can weigh. You ever pick up a box of manila folders? It's pretty heavy. So Amazon's gonna charge you for that weight. So be very careful with that, okay? But eight by five by 11 is, you know, generally the consensus. It's gonna be the amount that's in the box. So right now we're waiting for the helium 10 to load and we wanna see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's always when I'm online when this happens. When I'm by myself, it just wings light right along. <laughs> Maybe that just gives me more time to spend with all of you. That's great. Okay, so it should be getting ready to pop up. But the prices do look good and we're gonna analyze it the same way. We need to analyze our graph. We wanna see that it's steady all year round. We don't wanna see it going up to 10,000, 11,000 and then maybe in August it drops. So this is really good. I see that seven people out of 10 are doing really well. They're, they're up above my 8,000. And then I see there's three reviews that are below 250. This is a good for me. I like four, but I can go down and look what, what's going on in, on the next 10 and I can find four, five, and six. And so that's going to give me, look at that, 15, 25. I'll take the 274 and the 250. So I've got four, but I do have this one. Mm, that's high. But remember, we're getting rid of the filters. So we're going to get rid of the filter and we're going to look at the organic sales. So I have my 15, my 25. I'll take the 283 and I'll take the 258. That looks good to me. And if I scale down and look, I have a 149 and I have a zero. I have a new person. Oh, that's staples. Hmm. But we're going to look over here. I see two staples, but I don't see any more. But I see two Pendaflex and I see another Pendaflex and another. So this is brand dominant under Pendaflex. So I would definitely not use this keyword. I would not try to get in there with them. It's like Smead. These are all well known. This is ba basic products. OK, so basic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I guess it's supposed to mean basic and that's Amazon basic. Okay. No, it's US, it's US company, but here we are. This is what we're talking about. Amazon, 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 Amazon. Everybody here is Amazon, Amazon selling it. Okay. That's not good. So I need another keyword where Amazon is not saturating this market, but for training purposes, say this was not Amazon and say this was not brand dominant, but I'm just showing you why we would not pick this keyword but we have 7,000, that's really good, okay? And what we wanna see is what's going on in one year, okay? It doesn't dip below 10, it doesn't, never gets below my 5,000. 6,000 is fine. And the only problem is right here, but this, there's a reason for this. 
Okay, we have our Christmas sale after Christmas. We have things that are going on. People are going back to school, secretaries uh, for schools, and things are happening right around, you know, the September time. So it's going to breach that. So you're going to need a bigger budget to compete when it breaches the 20000 okay? But generally, it's going to stay pretty below, you know, for the long periods of time. It's going to stay within the 5000 to 20000 You will always have anomalies, and you're going to learn how to read them. Christmas time, you're going to see right here. This is funny because this is right after Christmas, it dips, but it dips to a healthy 15,000 searches. That's fine. So right here is where it should not be dipping, but over here is your Christmas. We want to see December 4th. We're going to get that spike to 19,000. And this is Christmas. People are buying them. Okay. We're going to go check out and we'll see Christmas again, August. Uh, let me see September. We're coming up on it again. So this search volume will definitely go up. We're going to have Black Friday and we're going to have Christmas. And uh, through your products, you're going to see a bunch of spikes. Oh, but it goes up high. That's fine. That's Christmas. Make sure you get good stock in there on your product for Christmas and Black Friday. And then just go back to your norm because sometimes your product may be 7,000 all year round and then you have the Christmas spike and now it jumps to 10,000 all year round. These Christmas spikes can, can give your product a new higher placement. And this is great for your sales. So this is how we analyze a product. We're also looking and seeing, hmm, this product is selling $3 million a month, a month. So this is a good product. These are good on related keywords and things like that, but it's Amazon saturated and it's brand dominated. So this is the reason why we would not choose this keyword, but we can also go back and grab the po popular keyword and then we can reverse ASIN it and look for a different keyword that still sells the same product. And this is how we look for products. So we basically want to look. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set you up with the next video. And then we're going to do Magnet. Magnet is super exciting. Stay tuned because this is how we're going to find a bunch of keywords. And we're going to go look at products. We don't know what they are. We're going to learn long tail keywords. We're going to find different ways of doing some product research. Okay. But for right now, this is the strategy session on showing you what we're looking for when we look for a product. We don't want Amazon to be saturating that product. We don't want a brand dominance because it shows, hey, I'm here. I control this, this niche right here, this keyword, and people will tend to, to lean towards getting them, whether it's a good product or not. You know, we look at the reviews. Are they a four star or, or a three star? If it's a three star, generally that tells you their, their product's not that great. But for some reason, they're still selling and it could be because they're brand dominant. But they're going to be having some issues. But if it's AMZ, AMZ, and they're a three star, what's Amazon going to do? Smack their own hand? Please. <laughs> they're three star. They're going to yell at themselves. Come on, increase your thing. Go check your listing. No, it's Amazon. But if it were us, you know, it's a different story. We have some fixes to do and not a problem. But we can always look for alternate keywords to sell the same product and where we can become more lucrative and where we can get ourselves in. So we want a review count that's low where we can jump in. We want to see that the revenues are, are good. And we want to make sure that that graft is consistent all year round. Even sometimes you'll have a seasonal product but it sells really good all year round, still a good product. We do not recommend you sell seasonal, but if it sells good all year round on that graft and the sales are good, it's not brand dominant, Amazon's not in there all over the place, and it's been around for at least a year, so we can have enough data to analyze, it's still a good product. So now we're gonna go into our next video. We'll see you soon. I hope you learned a lot of great information here. And if you learned something valuable, go ahead and click the like button and we'll get into the next segment where we're gonna jump back into Helium 10 and we're gonna now try a different way of looking. And we're gonna go into Magnet. I like Magnet, it's a lot of fun. And I hope you like it too. So thanks for joining us. Much aloha to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Aloha.